Estrogen seems to have a negative reputation, acne, water retention, and moon face, but it's not the enemy. When you learn to control those levels, you're gonna get all the gains and minimize those sides. If estrogen was an actor in a film, it would be the bad guy. It's misunderstood. Excessively high estrogen and excessively low estrogen comes with their own unique side effects. Now, what causes high levels of estrogen? Crazy amounts of testosterone, high intakes of food, lots of sodium, aromatizing steroids used, poor injection frequency and dosaging. Did I mention high body fat? And the individual's genetic response to whatever aromatizing steroids they're using is all going to contribute to serum estradiol levels rising. What are we looking for in our blood work? A simple blood check for testosterone, DHT, DHEA, DHEA sulfate, cortisol, and estradiol. Most people actually miss out the DHEA one. It's important to know this because this can offset an unfavorable ratio between the estrogens E1, E1S, and E2. So if you run those tests, you're gonna get a complete picture of what your hormones are doing. Then you can make the necessary adjustments to put these hormones into their right ratios. Some guys even avoid blood work. They get caught out big time. It could be progesterone or prolactin. So those guys are there without the blood work, knocking on the wrong door, no one's answering, it's not smart. So let's all say it together now. I, Dr. James, you repeat your name, I, Dr. James, will get my blood work done before making any adjustments on cycle. So if we're cruising or doing the traditional TRT, we should be looking for an 18 to 13 to one ratio. So that's 720 total testosterone and 40 estradiol. However, when we're on our pre-blast and our blast phases, I have found personally 25 to 75 is going to be ideal. Remember, we're not running stupid dosages here. If you go beyond the 75 to 100 range, that's the area of diminishing returns. Nipples are sensitive, puffy face, more water in the legs and the hands. You've got a greasier skin. You may be prone to acne if you're living at 75 to 100. So we keep those levels in check by adjustments to our testosterone esters decreasing our body fat levels or the dosing frequency, or by adding an AI protocol that's going to keep those estradiol levels within the recommended range. There's four situations for high estradiol. The first one is not hitting the like button. You wanna experience side effects upon side effects upon side effects. So the first one actually is water retention. Just because you're holding a little bit of water does not mean you need to start popping Arimidex or an Asterazole like they're Smarties. Some people prefer Tic Tacs. There can be other causes. It could be the diet choices you're making, the D-Bowl, the Nandrolone, the Too High Test, the MK677, the growth hormone, many compounds out there that could increase your fluid retention. So the blood pressure has gone up. It is not 100% serum estradiol levels that are contributing or being the sole contributor of your blood pressure being high. Angiotensin converting enzyme controls the blood pressure by regulating your fluid volume inside your vascular system. That can indirectly increase your blood pressure by causing your blood vessels to constrict. So if you have high estradiol levels or even low estradiol levels, Levels, that's going to alter your blood pressure levels tremendously. Now, if your estradiol is in range and your blood pressure is high, you can use an angiotensin blocker, an ARB. I would personally go for that, looking at the data that's out there instead of an ACE inhibitor. So that means a low dose of telmosartin is going to keep your blood pressure in range. Because having chronically high blood pressure your kidneys are gonna be destroyed. And all your gains that you're looking to get are gonna be off the table. Kidney failure was what got him. What was the cause? It was those high estradiol levels, said no doctor ever. Calcium, potassium, and magnesium all play an essential role in mediating estradiol-induced relaxation of the vascular system. Consistent electrolyte intake is essential at the right ratios to control blood pressure during your first cycle pre-blast or blast. A familiar side effect is acne. Most people think it's estrogen to blame, but it's not always the case. In fact, it's mostly down to big fluctuations in your hormone levels. Some guys have horrible hormone swings naturally. Adding some external testosterone can balance those levels out and potentially resolve the acne. I think the biggest thing that's gonna help guys straight away is to change your injection frequency. Instead of doing once a week, try 
every other day or two times a week. And realize when you make adjustments in your anabolic agents, say you add some more test or you increase the Primo or you add some T-Bowl in, that's gonna affect your hormone balance and potentially bring on oily skin leading to acne down the line. It's because you've got too many androgens in ratio to estrogens, progesterone and DHEA. And that causes that imbalance and the old spot attack. It does depend on your genetics, what gear you're using, but you need to try as many methods as possible to see what works for you. So antibacterial soap and an exfoliating scrub. When you've been sweating in the gym or outside, Use that to wash your back, shoulders, face, neck. Try one or two weeks with no dairy or any sugars. The skin cells that you make today take 30 days to actually reach the surface. So what you eat today is gonna to affect your appearance in the mirror 30 days down the line. Skincare specialist over here. Every little contribution does help. And if we apply lots of little contributions, often that fixes things completely. So moving on, gyno. We know that estradiol high amounts does contribute. However, prolactin and progesterone love to chip in and cause it as well. Let's say your estradiol is beyond the reference range, but your prolactin and your progesterone is within the reference range. There's a low chance of you actually getting gyno unless you're on growth hormone because that's going to activate the prolactin receptor. There are stages of gyno. If you get inflamed or sensitive or itchy nipples, it's not gyno, that's where most guys panic. That's not gyno that needs surgery. So if you do see the emergence of water around your chest versus other areas of your body, add in a serum, Novadex, because that's going to block the receptors on your, <laughs> on your chest specifically. However, it cannot block the progesterone receptors. This is absolutely fine if you are not on a 19 nor like Nandrolone. But if you are, you're gonna be hit with a huge curveball. That means something unexpected is coming. Now you're mine. The 19 nor DEC or MPP or TREN is going to activate the progesterone receptors and that's going to increase prolactin secretion. Someone can be slamming an AI if they're on DEC or MPP and still get gyno. But if you keep your estrogen within range, it's highly unlikely that you're gonna get it. And you smoke weed, that is going to jack up your prolactin to potentially drop the weed. The truth is it's not straightforward. Estrogen is not cut and dry. It's complicated. Pretty much the more gear you add, the less attention to the diet and the neglect of the blood work is gonna really complicate things on cycle. The worst thing you can do is head into your first cycle and not know what's gonna mess you up. If you need help and expert guidance throughout your cycle where you're avoiding those unnecessary side effects, reach out for coaching. There's a link in the video description below Click that and I'll get back to you. If you've reached out to me and you've had no reply at all, or we were messaging back and forth and I've just completely blanked you, go check your spam folder. Or alternatively, you can message me on Instagram direct. The next video coming up is all about estrogen, but we're looking at low estrogen levels this time, not those high ones. Sit back, relax, and I'll see you in that next video.